Hi, welcome back. I want to show you how you take apart your um, V-Star 650 carburetors. Usually the there's two reasons why you want to do this. One, the bike's been sitting, doesn't want to run, so you need to clean the jets. Two, you're putting a jet kit in because uh, you put a pipes and a different air cleaner. Rarely you got to disassemble the two carburetors apart from each other. We're not going to do that. I've been doing this for a long time and I haven't had to take any one of these V-Star carburetors apart. You're going to remove these eight bolts over here that hold our float bolts. You noticed on this side we're removing the whole idle screw adjustment. I'm going to put that aside. My stuff is clean because um, I've been already through these carburetors. I'm going to dump them here on the rag. Next we're going to remove our jets. There is two jets to remove in each one. Main jet here and the idle jet over here. Same on the other side, main jet, idle jet. And we need to remove this, this pin that's holding our floats. When you're removing the main jets, be careful because the front and the rear cylinder has different sizes. So make sure when you're organizing your parts, you have them organized correctly. Next, 8 millimeter. We'll loosen up these tubes. When you're taking these tubes off, you will notice there are uh, brass washers underneath them. The next, we're going to take these pins out. slide it off. You don't even have to take it all the way out, you can just let it hang in that one hole. My uh, float is out, my needle fell down, so here's my needle. So keep everything organized. The next thing we got to take apart are these uh, two Phillips screws. The, they are holding our seats. Now it's important to take these out because there is an o-ring on the bottom. Sometimes they come out by hand like this. That's usually a bad sign. This o-ring is going to need to be replaced and uh, this is all we need to take off from from here we're going to flip it over and and disassemble the top part i was running out of room a little bit so i move all my stuff here like i said keep everything nice and neat so you don't get confused where everything's supposed to be Just pull that out, put it aside, and we pick up our uh, diaphragm with the needle attached to it. When your bike's been sitting, usually this needle gets nasty over here and it's got to be cleaned up. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Notice on this side you have your uh, throttle cable bracket. So again, just put it in a neat way so you know where it was. Let me start putting it back together.
Okay, now our uh, carburetor body is pretty much as, as far apart as we need it to be. Uh, a lot of people like to take the air and uh, gas mixture screws off. I leave them in. I will show you just so you know uh, what, what it looks like under there. The reason why I'm not a big fan of taking them out, there's a uh, tiny O-rings, spring and a tiny washer. And, uh, okay, I got lucky here. They all stay together. So if you look at it, uh, let me focus here. If you look at it, you have a spring, a little metal washer, and an O-ring. Um, a lot of times when you take these out, you can get the spring out and the metal washer, the, the rubber O-ring likes to stay stuck in there. Hard to get off. Um, rarely there's something wrong with these. I'm just going to put this one back in. If you have a stock bike, I recommend from all the way in, go two and a half turns. So next thing I would say depends what your uh, purpose of taking it apart is. If you're doing a jet kit, you're going to be replacing the needles. Uh, you're going to be replacing some jets and your carburetor is clean. So you don't really have to worry about none of this. If your bike has uh, been sitting, you can use a carburetor cleaner. Um, like this one right here um, a paper towel or, or rag spray it and start wiping all the the dark areas with it um, clean everything up you have uh, right here you have a uh, holes that you need to make sure they're open over here uh, you need to make sure that these holes are open over here there's two on each this is your choke you need to make sure the choke is open you can't take it off so uh, the best tool that I'm using one piece out of a wire brush you're just regular basic steel wire brush you can rip one out and it works perfectly it fits in all these little holes in your uh, jets doesn't hurt him it's not too big to make him damage them so this is a great tool to use doesn't cost you nothing you most likely have a wire brush in your toolbox the other thing that I use to uh, clean really dirty carburetors they are oily and nasty um, beyond just wiping them off with your paper towel or rag is this uh, purple power degreaser you spray them all with it um, you can use a brush to, to scrub everything nice and clean and then you rinse it with water after you do that you have to thoroughly um, clean it with uh, with the air nozzle so you don't have any water left on it but that's also a good way to clean really really nasty unit to clean all our internal parts I love using this uh, chemical dip um, it's specially made for carburetor parts. It does not hurt uh, rubber pieces, uh, rubber um, parts. You pull this out. It's got this great little tray. But well, basically, what you're going to be putting there is your jets, float needles, float seats. Uh, I'll put these in there. We're going to put that in the tray um, and let it sit for hour, half hour. You rinse it with water and then you blow all the parts with compressed air to have everything water free. We're going to start in putting this carburetor back together. Like I said, I'm doing this only as a demonstration. Um, my carburetor was already clean. Um, when you're putting the, the needle in, make sure it goes nicely inside the, the tube there. If you have a problem so see this one stays nice in the groove I I have a little trick if I have a super glue ready and if I have a problem with this diaphragm sometimes it happens and you you putting it on and it just doesn't want to stay in place little dots of of like a four of them uh, four dots of this uh, this crazy glue in and it'll help you hold this diaphragm in place so 
you don't pinch it. It's very important to get this diaphragm in nice and straight. Okay. Get our spring in. We have a only one place where, where this fits, so it's, it's pretty clear where that goes. Uh, put our screws in. Now we're going to flip it around and start putting our jets back in. We have our main jet. Make sure your uh, uh, washer is on. You might want to pick the carburetor up and, and do it this way so your washer stay in place. Our main jets, make sure we don't mix the wrong one. So now I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver and basically tighten both things with it at the same time. Next thing is our idle jets, they're both same. Next, uh, we got new O-rings on these, so uh, I'm going to uh, spray a little WD-40 on, on it. I use a 8mm uh, socket, kind of like a tool, and just push it in that way. Makes it a little easier. Let me take our little screws that hold the uh, float needle seats. Next we're going to do our float needles. Uh, I like to do also a little bit of WD-40 on the tips. Right here in this float needle it's a it's a little pin. I'll show you. Um, the pin is spring loaded and it has to work. This spring right here has to move. When the bike's been sitting a lot of times this will be stuck in or if it's not, if it's rigid, you gotta clean it up. You gotta try to spray carburetor cleaner, work it. If you can't make it work, you gotta replace the needle. Also inspect your tip. You don't want no big groove or swollen rubber. I put it right on uh, on the uh, right here on the float. Leave it hanging on it. And push this back in. If it's a little stubborn, you can use. Uh, I don't really like to use hammer on these things, so that should be enough right there. Okay, um, everything here is put together. Uh, <coughs> I didn't mess with the floats heights uh, I always like to check him the way I check him is kind of a, a, a just a common sense you can pick him up and kind of see where they start closing okay next we're gonna move uh, with the our, uh, our float balls they're nice and clean uh, again kind of only goes on, on one way hard to make a mistake here don't forget on your throttle side you have the the idle adjuster.
Okay, so our carburetor is back together. Subscribe to see more helpful videos and uh, take care. Thanks.